You're listening to the Low Pressure Podcast, the podcast for skiers. Presented by CMH Heli Skiing and Peak Performance. This episode of the LPP is brought to you by CMH Heli Skiing, Peak Performance Outerwear, Fat Tire Amber Ale, RMU Skis and Mountain Culture Shops, and the official destination partner of the LPP, Kicking Horse Mountain Resort in beautiful Golden British Columbia. Enjoy the episode. Boys, we, uh, I'm going to open up one of your little uh, Monster Hydros here. Yeah. Cheers. Let's yes. do it. Cheers, gentlemen. Cheers. 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 <laughs> we are here wow. at uh, Sammy Carlson's house, for those of you who aren't watching on YouTube. Uh, we're sitting with Sammy Carlson with Yu Sasaki. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. Who is a little nervous because <laughs> yes. uh, it's his first English language podcast. Yeah. And right. I don't think you should be nervous, man. <laughs> You're good. We, we will. Uh, well, I was asking people, I told you I was asking people, I said, hey, yeah. you know, I've talked to you a bit, yeah. but not in a while. How's his English? Yeah. Should we do a <laughs> podcast with him? I want to get him on the show. And yeah. they're like, Maybe not for an hour. <laughs> so, that's true. That's true. That's fine. But yeah. that's good. So then I was talking to Sammy, yeah. who and you guys have been skiing together a bunch yeah. in Revelstoke here. Yeah. So I'm just like, oh, yeah, just come. We'll do a podcast at my house. We'll get you. I'll help him out. So yeah. like, thanks, Sammy, for doing that. So yes, we're going to start this one off with not you, but you. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody, yeah, confusing on my name. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, it's funny because I was telling someone the other day, I'm like, I'm yeah. doing a podcast with you tomorrow. Yeah. And they're like, I thought we were doing it on Sunday. I'm like, no, I'm doing it with you tomorrow. <laughs> like, what? Like, no, no, it's Sunday. I'm like, no, yeah. tomorrow with yeah. you. And they're yeah. like, what? <laughs> went on, it, was at the, it was at the bar the other night. It went on for quite a while. I actually yeah. did it because it was super funny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but anyways, you, stoked that you're here. Yes, yeah, thanks, thanks for linking up. So yeah. tell everybody, yeah, where are you from? Uh, I am originally from Japan. Where in Japan? And uh, Hokkaido, it's a North Island mm-hmm. in Japan. And then my hometown is a Sapporo. You guys know now Sapporo beer. Yep, right? that yep. is my hometown. Oh, nice! I like Sapporo. Yes, that's where you fly into. Yeah, we rented a car there. I love how the rental cars there are all like four wheel drives. Yeah, yeah. It's a. Uh, do you miss? Do you miss being there? Ah uh, yes, yeah. Last three years, I didn't back to Japan for the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, because of COVID, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you miss living there? Uh, not miss. Just kind of uh, good for the visiting in Japan. Yeah, but yeah. not for living for me. Yeah, yeah. The Revy is more comfy. Rev- how, how long have you lived in Revelstoke for? Revy for the five years now. Five years. So you did you live in Whistler for a little while too? Oh uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Whistler was. Eight years, and then after Skomish, three years, and then, yeah. Right, right. And yeah. I think, so before I knew who you were as you, yeah. <laughs> I think, I, 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 I think I've seen... But we got a rule, you can only pull that joke a couple times. And then, <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair. Then yeah, yeah, okay, cool, yeah. <laughs> like, yo, dude, he was going to beat you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no. But before I, but before I knew you, <laughs> yeah. as, but like, uh, but like I could have I said it before I knew you as Sammy Carlson, yeah. but, I, but before I knew who you were... Um, like I'm sure we've been on a chairlift or in a gondola together. I've yeah. been in Whistler for 20 years. Okay. But I think I remember first understanding who you were. Yeah. So you know when you're skiing out of the glacier. Yeah. And on the right. Yeah. There's the little pillow line. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. I and then there's that. the cliff. Yeah. The cliffs right there. Yeah. And I think on a pow day one day I was like, you ski the pillows and then come around yeah. below, and then okay. there's the cliff right there. And I think yeah. I saw you like launch. So yeah. there's like there's this air to a shelf that people usually like do a little side like a little sidestep yeah double stager double stager yeah, yeah. so they'll pop down onto the yeah. stager and go yeah. Yeah. and I, and it's flat it's <laughs> so flat and you I, I'm, I think it was you yeah. just launched it the whole way and like boom stuck <laughs> and got right. up and left and I'm like who the hell is that guy and we're like these crazy Japanese guys that are living in town right now I'm like who are they who are they I don't remember exactly but I did tons of flat landing in Novisla <laughs> yeah, when I was young yeah, yeah. so when did you when did you move there originally 
Uh, after I graduated high school. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when I was 19 years old. 19 straight to Canada. Yes. Did you do the work visa program? Uh, no, I got the working holiday visa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then come here. And what did you do? Uh, I was working in a Japanese restaurant. I was going to say yeah, sushi chef. Yeah, of course, uh, because uh, I couldn't speak English. Mm -hmm. So only one way to working in a kind of Japanese yeah. Yeah, restaurant. Which yeah. one? Uh, samurai sushi at you, Nesta's. You worked at yeah. Samurai. Yes, yes of course <laughs> you did. Spot. Hundred percent. You've made me dinner before. Thank you, <laughs> sir. Thank yeah, you. But that's Same usually here. that's usually the route that you go to, right? Yeah. Did you go to the uh, English school above TMC? Uh no. I was living in Vancouver a few months when I came in Canada, mm -hmm. and then I went to the ESL school and yep. learning English a little bit. Yep. But it's not helps for me because all student is like uh, from Mexico, from Korea. Everybody couldn't speak English very well. Oh, right. <laughs> so, yeah, it couldn't help, right? So you couldn't like speak in Japanese to somebody. Yeah, kind of. Like, what yeah. is this word? Like, what's cat again? Or you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, right, yeah. Well, right. it's actually better than everybody expects. No, it's teasing. Like, you're good. Like, we can do this for no, a while. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. it's funny, but it's a Japanese trait, right? To be like yeah. super humble and yeah. like, no, no. Yeah, no, you're good to go. <laughs> so you. you were in Whistler for eight years. Were you at sushi, Samurai Sushi the whole time? Uh, for, I think first five years, they're uh, working on the full time in the Samurai Sushi, and yeah. after I got the working working visa, and I got the permanent residence, yeah. and then I'm start working at the other restaurant. Oh, cool. So did you get permanent residency since he residency through them? Yeah. Ah, cool. And then the reason that you wanted to stay in Canada? Uh, yes, yeah. Since I moved in Canada, okay. I want to live in Canada forever. In Japan, not for me. Really? Yeah, How come? Canada, please. Yeah, because uh, it's Canada has a uh, lot of nature and mm -hmm. the people is good. But in Japan, of course, it's a good place. I like it. But it's sometimes it's too busy for me. Right. It, still, Sapporo is a big city and many people were there. And kind of 24 hours, people moving, moving, moving. And that's kind of not not fit for me. Right, right. Yeah. And that's why you ended up here. Yeah. And is that why you left Whistler as well? Because Whistler was a bit too busy for you? Uh, yes, Whistler, is, uh, Whistler was a good place when I moved in 2006. But after Vancouver Olympics, it, everything was changed. Yeah. yeah, it's super busy right now. So yeah, there's the pay parking that didn't it, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. You had to pay for parking and yeah. you're like, screw this, I'm <laughs> yeah. out of here. I know. But when I moved in the Whistler, I was living in a parking, free parking spot. Yeah. Uh, I got the van and always sleep in the parking spot. Oh, really? Yes. You had a van? Yeah. Which, yeah. Where, which parking lot were you sleeping in? Uh, lot four. Yeah. And sometimes underground parking in the village. Yeah. 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 Still. yeah. So you can't do that anymore. No, they had um, they had like all the mayors and all the councillors and everything. Once they put in pay parking, that was like the the straw that broke yeah. the camel's back. Everybody yeah. voted everybody out. Yeah, but the same thing. It did definitely change. Like I've noticed, I've been there since '99, and I've noticed lots yeah. of differences too. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you decided just to go straight to straight here, or did you go anywhere else? Uh, in between? no. After Whistler, yeah, my f uh, I got the Mary, I got the kids. So we you got married in Whistler. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And then yeah, we. Decided to move to a Skirmish. Okay. Yeah. It's a little bit, little more of a little more, <laughs> a little bit more affordable then. Yeah. Yeah. And then when did you decide to move to Revelstoke? Oh, um, after three years, yeah, Skirmish also getting busy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then yeah, Revelstoke. I'm visiting here every winter season since ski resort was open in 2008. Right. I guess. Right. Yeah. And then first time I was in here, just stay one day, and then next time, a few days, and then next time, in a, a week, they're getting longer, longer, longer. Yep. Yeah. And then, okay, yeah, River Stoke is a spot. Yeah. And then we decided. Does, we're going to move. Yeah. Sweet. So um, a lot of people know that you have a food truck. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. When did, have you, you've had it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, <laughs> when did you start the... Uh... Uh, food truck business... Uh, I think eight years ago now. Yeah. Yeah. And you've yes. been in Revelstoke for how long? Uh, no, started in Squamish. You started it in Squamish. Yeah. yeah. All right. And what kind of food? Like why? Did you, stuff you learned working at Samurai Sushi? <laughs> uh, okay. uh, yeah. Original is uh, my boss from the Samurai Sushi. You uh, was it uh, Ru? Uh, Ru and uh, Yasu. Ru, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, they wanted to stuff on the food truck. Okay. Yeah. In like a uh, Squamish festival. Mm -hmm. It was huge music event in the skirmish right and then they tried in uh getting to it by the food truck mm -hmm. and then they got a big success in the skirmish festival uh -huh. and then after my boss said okay let's start food truck business with couple of few stuff i think 
four or five, mm-hmm. and then we started. Yeah, but cool. it, uh, after yeah. it's a little difficult to pick all the five of us to make money. It's difficult, right? Too many people, right? Yeah, too many people, right. and then spread, 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 and then now. It's my own company. So, did you take it over, or did you start your, your own indi- in individual one? Uh, no, taking over a little bit, yeah. and then after starting up on my business. Oh, cool! In, individual. Nice. And how's that? Like you're doing well. You, oh yeah. You do basically you go to the festival circuit, right? Uh, yeah, I used you, to. You started. You started at yeah. uh, the Squam, which makes sense because he was telling me you go to like Shambhala oh, and yeah. all like the dance parties, yeah. like the hippie dance parties in the yeah. woods. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you love that. Oh yeah, Bye. that's a, yeah. Sorry, that's kind of more so fun mean. stuff. Right, do you do you do you go because you like like dance to the music too? I like it. I like it. But yeah. mostly, yeah, I'm walking in the hood truck. Right. So yeah. you and your wife. Yeah. Tell them how much pounds of rice you bring down. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, just for the Shambhala, this year we bring the pound, no, 400 Ki- kilo. 400 kilograms yes. of rice. So, so it's like almost a thousand nine, pounds yeah, of rice. Yeah, thousand pounds. Yeah, yeah. Couple of snowmobiles. Yeah, right. <laughs> do you, do you like haul it in the, in the food truck or do you have like another truck that you have another to load truck. up? Another yeah. truck. Yeah. We bring that three. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then we can rent a big trailer in the free, freezer freezer truck and then freezer trailer we are renting on the spot rent and yeah then, yeah and Wild. The, all the food supplier coming in the shambhala like a cisco gfs yeah oh so the full-on okay so it's a full-on so you don't have to bring everything that's wild man <laughs> and then so that's your main gig throughout the the summertime uh summertime yes yeah i have running a two food truck right now two yep now one is uh, always running uh, in town, mm-hmm. and then another one is circuit on the uh, music festival. Right. Yeah. Oh, it's very cool, man. Yeah. Uh, that's, are you going to try and open up many more? I don't think so. As many more is kind of too much. I cannot ski. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that was the whole point, is so you could work yeah. in the summertime. So yes, you yeah, go. to focus on the uh, make money. Yeah, because I have two kids now. Yeah. So. <laughs> there, what did you say? There's seven and four? Yeah, seven, yeah three. Yeah. Seven and three. Yeah. So how is it? When you're on the road doing all that work and it's because you're at a festival, you have to open what 10, 12 hours a day. Uh, opening the twenty four hours. Twenty four hours. So you have yes. some staff that are working. Yeah, I bring uh, this year fourteen staff. Fourteen. Yeah, but not enough for the food truck. Yes. How many people work in the truck at one time? One time is a four or five. Oh wow. On a eight eight hour shift, mm-hmm. and we are rotation in the t- running on the twenty four hours. Wow. But fourteen staff is not enough this year, so I should bring the twenty next year. And so, <laughs> since you have so many staff, are you able to not? have to work as much because you got little kids you have to take care of the kids i'm sure i know the wife works with with you as well yeah but sometimes you need a break and if you have that many people are you Uh, able to just let them i want to try able to just want to stop but it was too busy this Mm -hmm. year so me and my buddy was working i think 20 hours in a day times five days wow (laughs) And that's just so you can go skiing in the wintertime. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> yeah, yes. he's a hard worker all right. the time. Yeah. And then in the, in, the, in the summertime, do you, or sorry, in the wintertime, yeah. do you, when you're skiing, you just have staff that operate yes. it? Yeah, I have a staff and then my wife also helps on the food truck. So right. I'm mostly, I won't touch on the food truck, just focus on the skiing. Yeah. Yeah. My summertime, my turn, but the wintertime, my wife. <laughs> oh, okay. And then do you guys take a little vacation for yourselves? Oh yeah, shorter season. Yeah. Every kind of October. And then springtime. Yeah, because yeah. you were in Whistler recently, last year, I think. Last year, yes. Whistler yeah. Squamish, you yes. were visiting. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Right. Yeah. Cool, man. So this past season, you had a bad injury. Yes. What? Oh, uh, no. So it was your Achilles? Yes, my Achilles was torn. Ooh, how, uh, did you, how did you do that? Something cool? No, I didn't do any credit. Just a 10th cliff pillows and then by landing, landing on the ditches. And then oh. my skis didn't pop off, and the, all my weight was lean for. And it just ripped it. Yes, but f- when I got injured, I didn't feel any pain. Mm-hmm. Just I was thinking, just broke on my ski, broke on my boot, but no. Because it ripped it completely off. Yeah. So that's what I've heard. Have you heard that? Like when you blow no. like a knee or a ligament or something, and it's not completely torn, that's when it's like super painful. But if you rip it like completely no. out, no. I think no. I've heard that. I heard it doesn't. Hurt no, as much. no pain. And then, yeah, it it happened in a ski resort. Okay. And then I was ski by myself to Nagondi, and then Gondi down, and then tried to start walking. And then now I'm realized I couldn't walk on the toe because super loose. Oh yeah. And then fuck. And then yeah, my Achilles was torn. 
Oh, yeah. brutal. And then, so what's, what's, uh, so you, you did that what time of year? Oh, it's in January. Yeah. January. Yeah, first week of January. Right. So last year was my season was only December, just one month. Right. Yeah. And you had, you couldn't uh, compete in the tour last year? No. Because that's uh, for a lot of people that may recognize your name, but don't yeah. know where you're from, is you've been competing on the Freeride World Tour for yeah. several years, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many years? Uh, I competed, I think, three years. Yep. Yeah. And then last year I was injured. And then two years ago, what I didn't go for a COVID. Oh, because of COVID. Oh, that's yeah. right. I yeah. remember that because you wanted to hang out with, the yeah. fa- make sure you stay with the family and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and you know, take care of, exactly, take care of your family. <laughs> like a man. Um, so what, how long has it been since, so it's almost been a year. Almost. And you've yes. been back on skis now this year? Yes. Yeah. How's it feeling? Yeah, it feels, yeah, it feels very good, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In the springtime, I'm not sure I can ski in this year or not, but keep training, working hard. And then from October, I start a uh, workout with Sami. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it, Sami saying. Yeah, it's just, yeah, lots okay. of help on the training because I was mostly kind of weight training in the summertime. Mm-hmm. And then since October, Sami told me more mobility training. That is uh, more help, my Achilles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you've, you've had a bunch of injuries, haven't you? Yeah, a few, definitely. I've been pretty lucky overall, but yeah, I hurt my knee pretty bad. And yeah, not going to wait. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I had a bad one in 2013 where I hurt my knee. And then yeah. my ankle I hurt um, a couple of times. I tore a ligament in my ankle. And then once I actually broke, like, broke my ankle and chipped a piece of bone off the side, uh, like the bottom corner of it. Yeah. And I just got so lucky. The doctor, when I went in, he was telling me that some like high level athletes will actually remove that part, like soccer players and yeah. um, football players to get more mobility out of their ankles really? and like take it off. So my bone had like chipped off the side of my ankle yeah. and like twisted 180 basically. Ooh. Super painful, I like, couldn't wow. step at all. It was just like super wow. sharp Kept every time I take a step. And that was like a week before X Games. Oh, so he okay. just like, he's like, yeah, I can go in and just suck it out. And basically you have to like let the incision heal and okay. just took the broken bone out. So yeah. it was like Ooh. gone. And then, yeah, like, I think, like, five days later, I tried to take a run through the slope course. What? Just because I was, like, there and didn't want to waste yeah. the opportunity, but it was so painful. Yeah. Didn't uh, leave it. and could, did, Couldn't compete? No, I couldn't compete. But what, from pe- People are going to start looking back and finding out what year that was. Yeah, it was, like, 20, I think, 12, 2013, maybe something like that. Crazy. 2012, yeah. Wow. So, yeah. but you've got, and, like, you've always done a lot of, like, um, like home workout stuff. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, from the, when I hurt my knee... I was skiing for Nike at the time and they just brought me in to the HQ and I was, they set up a whole workout program with me where I was training with a, like I had my own trainer yeah. pretty much like three, four times a week I'd go in there. And then as I started getting better, it was like five every day, like every weekday we go in there and we just made this badass program where the trainer and I, we would just, while I was recovering, he would just take the time to kind of study the movements. I'd show him like clips of like what I was doing out there. And so then he just went in and dissected it and. Like it was all kind of balance and strength combined, but mm-hmm. we call it like ninja training. We together made this pretty badass program. Sweet. So now <laughs> I always try and like go back to that yeah. and just uh, kind of adapt the program to right. kind of keep changing it up. Right, because you, you've never really done much of that before, have you? Have you hurt yourself before you did your no, Achilles? No, Achilles one is uh, my first time for an injury on my ski carrier. Yeah. yeah, that's good for you. <laughs> After watching you hit those flat landings that I did, man. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was sick. That he came over and his his quads are like as big as my chest. Oh, really? Pretty much. <laughs> no, and, nah, maybe not quite that. But yeah, we just started like I was showing him some of the more like mobility exercises and yeah. kind of just trying to be fast and explosive rather than just like only training strength, only, only power yeah. and strength, right? Yeah. yeah Do you sure. feel different now that you're getting stronger, like I think with so. that sort of style of training? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feeling good. Yeah. Yeah. Are you gonna be <laughs> back on the tour this year? Mm, good question. <laughs> but maybe not this year. But still, now I'm skiing and it feels very good right now. Yeah. So maybe yeah, next year. But this year, but I'm focused on the filming. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. And no, so you guys sneak over like but sneak, I see- sneak over just a little bit so oh. you're in there. Oh yeah. Perfect. I'm back. Um so you, you don't even need me here. You yeah, absolutely. Just run yeah, the podcast, yeah, we're doing dude. good. No, this is good, man. We're stoked. I'm having a great time. Um <laughs> So yeah, you guys have been you guys have been like obviously training together, and you've been yeah. kind of you know a good friendship. Now you guys are living in town. Now yeah. now that you're in town, mm-hmm. this wicked place, uh, and you got like a little gym downstairs. Yeah, and you did it at your old place too. Yeah. Um, and then, 
So you've been skiing a bit together a bunch too. Mm-hmm. Like you had two, like one project uh, that was out, which was yeah, north of now. We yeah. linked up, right? For yeah. that, yeah. It's kind of yeah. All, I was stuck in Canada because my status was different <laughs> at the time. I was just going back and forth yeah. with the six month rule. Oh, right. Yeah, and then when when the borders closed, yeah, that so that, was that's gone that's completely. that's how it works. You can be in Canada for six months. As an yeah. yeah, like anyone from the states can come up here for six months and they gotta leave and then it resets. But it's kind of this gray area where no one really knows if that's like six months throughout the entire year. I wasn't really six trying months, to ask six them. months total or like yeah, six, it's like six and months then six. at a time. And then once yeah. you leave, it's supposed to reset the clock. But mm-hmm. I was doing that and not really staying. I think I stayed five and a half months was my longest before COVID. Yep. And then COVID came and everything just shut down and I that was like just you know all set up at my place and wanted to continue being here and like finish up some work on that um in the summertime so i didn't want to leave because i wouldn't be able to come back up and then as i i stayed through the summer and at the end of the summer it just did look like the border wasn't going to open at all like anytime soon so i just decided to hunker down and there was they made with covid they made like different exceptions exceptions yeah so i like went through the paperwork all the right way had to hire a lawyer to help me out with it right and then got it so i could stay like basically for a year and then at the end of like the next season, I went back to the States yeah. and the border still hadn't opened. Mm-hmm. I went down to see my family and everything. And um, yeah, at the end of that, I was really hoping like I went down for like I was thinking two weeks because there was talks like it kept being like next, you know, like two weeks. Yeah. We'll make another no one had any idea what was going on. Yeah. And everybody kept saying like, oh, this next one, it's going to open. So I went down, got to see my family and a bunch of friends back in Oregon, which was sweet. And then, yeah, the border the next two weeks came, didn't open. And then like the next one came, didn't open and I was down there and I'd actually over COVID is where I moved here, which was kind of like a... To this house. Yeah, into this house, yeah. <clears throat> which was a bit of a spur of a, just like opportunity came up. Wasn't right, because your, your place was like right, right on the mountain. Not right on, not oh, really. It's pretty close. Pretty it's close. it's yeah, pretty it's like close. It was, yeah, you could ride a bike there really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, it's a cool spot. Like you told me that you, I think the last time we re- recorded a podcast was like right after you yeah, had moved garage, in. Right? Yeah, yeah, in the garage. Like you showed me that cool like... Uh, yeah, space, the, the space floor. Yeah, the but you space. had basically designed and built the house. Well, yeah, but we, I had designed the place with the the contractor that I hired to build it. We just made, it was like simple, supposed to be like two car garage, apartment on top, like pretty yeah. simple and easy. I just wanted to initially. I saw some lots when during the cold rush that were for sale on at the oh, corner, oh, like when, at the base right of the ski then, hill. Yeah, yeah, they're like eighty grand Canadian at the time. The conversion was. It was so strong, like 148 or something. Crazy. Like, yeah. yeah, the US dollar is like 148 to the Canadian dollar. So yeah. I was just like, kind of like you, I was going like back and forth from Oregon to Whistler yeah. just all the time. Whenever yeah. the snow was bad, I'd just like bomb out. Yeah. And got, it was starting to get to the point where I was like, why don't I just like try and move up there? Like, why am I leaving all the time and just driving back? Right. Like, okay. And I saw those losses yeah. thinking like in my head doing the math, like, wait, what? I could have a place here for that? Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, I just started, like, got that idea in my head. And then the next summer, I came back up to try and just, like, familiarize myself with the town and, like, yeah. just see what other options there were. And then the more time I spent here, I really enjoyed myself. So then I ended up, like, dropping into a little bit more expensive neighborhood. But as a result, um, even in the neighborhoods I was looking at, the building codes were all, like, so extreme. Very strict, such big right. houses oh, I see. that I just, yeah, like, yeah. took this, like, simple little garage, yeah, like, yeah. two-bedroom apartment idea. Dude, the, yeah, but it turned out to be, like, the, the raddest garage yeah, ever. Yeah, we call it the, the Garage Mahal. Garage Mahal, yeah. <laughs> and so then, so like, it was a super size. It was a great yeah. place. And then now you're in this, like, wood, this cabin, this log cabin out in the woods, yeah. uh, which is so rad. Yeah, that but you were telling me this is like your like your dream. Yeah, well, I always wanted to growing up to just have like a place with a little bit more space, mm-hmm. and so, yeah, just have. Because you're kind of up above the highway, you're back into the woods. You've got this cold kind of like yeah, it's like, you, like you'd never find this unless unless you just happen to drive up that road. You'd never know yeah. this was here. Yeah, I was so lucky to find. I think the original owner didn't really want to sell it mm-hmm. initially until yeah, I came yeah. along. You're showing me the, uh, the the picture on the wall. Yeah, it's classic. So t- here, I'm gonna grab it. I want you to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, grab. I think I set it up by the TV. Yeah. Here it is. All right, sweet. So this oh, is yeah. um, this here. Yeah, I can. This is a this is a uh, a picture that you had on the wall. So read yeah, it. You oh. should read. Yeah. All right, all right. You want me to read it? Or you want to read yeah, it? I'll read it. All right, cool. Yeah. So this is this was this was on the wall of the house. So the guy that you said owned this place before. Yeah. Didn't necessarily just want to sell it to anybody. Yeah, he wanted to keep the 
like heritage, yeah, keep it in the ski family is a, he's still, yeah, he's almost 70 and he's still like super passionate skier, getting out all the time, still ski touring. Right. He rides Armada for sure. So what is this this letter that he framed? So this was on the wall. When I first came over, I saw this place listed online and it said like, on the, in the listing, it's saying like, you deserve this tranquil lifestyle and like all the photos looked all epic and I was thinking like yeah no shit I do but I never afford that <laughs> yeah right it's like yeah. a log cabin and so then I just like called the, the realtor like I'll check it out because I had been since I bought my place I just kind of keep a finger on like what was happening with, with the real estate just keep your eye open yeah and saw this place like well that's like not a bad deal considering like there's a lot of land that came with the place too yeah and um it's sick too like being so close to town feels like we're out here but it's really just like five minutes right to yeah, get back yeah. into town so i don't feel like i'm like totally out right but if i want to just chill it, you know we got the full privacy but yeah i came in was looking with the realtor and he had told me that a deal just fell through from some like california investor that was going to just buy the place unseen mm -hmm. and uh, i guess yeah it didn't end up going down but he had accepted the offer for like well below the listing price with the tractor included in that yeah that's right because so you have they have a road like a steep kind of windy road down to the highway that you got to plow yourself yeah by the way vince did a great job oh, today yeah. he's the guy he's, yeah he kills it <laughs> nice driveway on the block yeah <laughs> for sure but yeah i came in the house and I was just amazed. Like as soon as I pulled up, I felt like just like such a nice feel um, being up here. Definitely a cool place. And I was walking through, checking it out, and then I like stumbled, up, started reading this letter, and it's uh, it's pretty sick. It's dated 1978. This is a this was what was hanging on it's the wall. It's a picture of the picture, the picture that was on the wall. Picture because you needed because there was it was it was so rad. You're like I need to have yeah, a, a copy yeah. of this. And that was part of I think that was the final. Like a this is what put you over checklist. The, yeah, well, this, this is, is like the thing that connected you and him to for be sure. like, this is gonna be my place. Yeah. And then as part of my like offer, I wrote it like I want a copy of the letter. Yeah, really. Uh, yeah, like a uh, on the wall. Yeah. And then yeah, so that's why he ended up taking a photo of this. He's a super funny guy. But yeah, it's dated 1978, January 4th, Revelstoke, to Kip Wiley. It says our records indicate that you were called for your crew. For 0325 on January 3rd, and you told the crew clerk that you weren't interested in going to work, and they were going to have a snooze, and then go skiing. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I've never before heard of anything so defiant and irresponsible as your attitude in this particular instance. However, I'll make a deal with you. The snow will be on the ground until about March 31st, so you can go ski to your heart's content until that date. Then we will conduct a formal investigation into your refusal to go to work. You may have a union representative present at the investigation if you so desire. And then it says, in the meantime, you will not be permitted to go to work. Signed by superintendent. Pretty epic. That's pretty sweet. So yeah. I, was just, I was just like, sick. what? Like, who is this dude? Like, got, I got to meet him like just to see. He like, got I was an, just, like, an actual letter from his from his work being like, hey, he's like, I'm going to have a snooze. I'm not coming to work today. I'm going to go skiing. Yeah. And as a skier, I always imagine like now we're showing up and like Ravi's like, I was lucky to be, you know, have lived here for a bit to where it wasn't super crowded the first few years I was here. But as a skier, I just imagine like what it would be like to be here, you know, at that time. Like yeah. these guys must have just been having the time of their lives. Because back then it was still like a big logging town, right? It was still yeah. a resource town. It wasn't oh, yeah. really, it wasn't really a skiing town at all. For like sure. so, he's probably like one of you know like a small crew of people that were here, yeah, like yeah. pioneering this zone, That's pioneering true. like lines yeah. and, and totally. And he has he gave us like they call themselves his ski crew. He had. He gave Vins and I shirts. He calls us the junior aldermen because the they were the aldermen, the like alderman. ski crew. Yeah, yeah. there's all the alders like around. You get it, but um, like it makes sense when you start skiing. That comes see. back. But yeah, this thing's cool. I'm gonna take a picture. Yeah, of take this. a photo. I'm gonna of that. take a picture of this. We're gonna post this on the uh, the thing. But that's so rad. Yeah, yeah. we connected over that. I was like, I gotta meet this dude and like ask him just some questions because the driveway is like yeah. definitely overwhelming. And I yeah, we came up and. I don't know. We can get into this later if you want to keep busting with you. No, keep going. You. We'll go back and forth. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was telling, like, I, yeah, we met. We were sitting over there and, and just... Um, the guy. Yeah, Kip. He was, yeah. I guess his new girlfriend had met me up at Mustang Lodge. Mm -hmm. And I guess I made a, a good impression on her. And um, so she told him to watch like Overtime or one of the movies. Yeah. yeah it was Overtime. That was yeah. C that was one you were seeking in, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that one was dope. Yeah, yeah. it turned out all right. Yeah, yeah. thank yeah. you. Thank <laughs> that one you. turned out all right, yeah. <laughs> but time was like the main message, you know, and, and that was his, he like really liked the message about time. He was telling me like, that's what I tell everyone. Like, you only got so much time in the day. You know, like, what are you going to do with it? For me, like him, I want to, like, I, I want to, he's like all about the guitar and he's learning late in life. So he's like, I, I want to get better, but it's not like, 
how much time I spend. It's like how I like actually spend the time training, right? Not just like sitting there, but like right, trying right. to focus it's, it's, yeah, that time. It's like it's not how much time you spend; it's the quality of time that you put in, right? Yeah. So we sat over here and just like talked for a couple hours, and like right away we connected, like beyond skiing. We just had a pretty similar outlook on life. Like, so yeah, you're just buds, right? Like how often do you go to yeah. try and buy a house from somebody, and you actually? have a conversation with him rather than through yeah. like real estate agents or something like that right yeah exactly but i think he was pretty psyched when i came along just because he had told me later how important it was to him to like keep yeah. keep the like heritage and like just the, keep the soul of the house yeah going, exactly right? yeah. like keep it yeah keep the he didn't want someone to come in and just like tear it down and build something right mm, or be here for French. two weeks at a time like you yeah know, like, just keep, have, like, like some investor come and oh, right. I see. yeah see. keep the soul of the building together right yeah. and it's awesome right yeah. Yeah. so yeah. i was like all right kippa like what's up with the driveway and it was the like most classic response ever he just like turned around he's like ah oh, sammy look around like yeah. you know when i built this place i was just like you i was young big dreams and you know, big dreams, <laughs> yeah. big responsibilities. <laughs> and this is like saying how like this place is like up here on the little bluff. Yeah. So he wanted the house to be like up on top of the bluff. Okay. And just he's saying like, yeah, three months out of the year, it's yeah. you got to deal with it. And then the right. other like, right, you know, other well, you got the tractor too. I guess if it gets too bad, you can always just park your sled down at the bottom of the hill. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I heard, yeah, he like when we were like going through towards the end of the, the like sale process. He was showing me the tractor and like some of the inspe- uh, inspectors were up here and they just started like talking about the tractor, which I really like had not much idea about it. And I just heard him talking about like, well, yeah, I started with this one. Then I got to this one. Then I retired and bought this one. And it was like talking about how it's like all enclosed with the heat yeah. and was stoked on that. So it's just like, I think uh, that's probably one of the biggest seller points. Like, I got a tractor with this house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, a full snowblower. So now we got Vins. Yeah, Vins. And Vins, it's so epic that Vins living out here with me. Because you got, like, a carriage house out here, too. Yeah, over the garage. It's, like, a little suite. Right. Yeah. Is so your gym in the garage? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we can check it. We can show you that. Yeah, I'll have to head yeah. over there. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So did you guys do, like, a like a several times a week plan when you were doing your workouts? More oh, yeah. kind of sporadic. But, yeah, yeah. a couple... Yeah, pretty much a couple of times a week. Yes. And yeah. then when I was out of town, he would come up and hit it up and yeah. do yeah. his thing. Yeah, no, right. I mean, you, uh, what, do you, what do you charge as a gym membership? Ah, three for you? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, he was the motivation. Like, it's sick. Some nights I would be like a little bit unmotivated. Kind of lazy. Would, he comes yeah, over and he's like, he would hit me up. Let's get like, your legs as big as mine. <laughs> Let's no, do man. it. <laughs> no, I got him on that ninja strength yeah. now. All right, right, right. It was sick to see him improve for yeah. sure. Oh, thank you. He's thank doing you. like a lot of just like fast movements, yeah. you know? Right. Get yeah. that timing back, get the speed back. Yes. Do you think you're right. going to try him for a wild card in January? No, I don't think so. I don't know. I can see every. <laughs> I've asked you this like four times. I'm hoping you change your answer, but <laughs> yeah. hopefully you'll be strong enough. So, you guys, let's get back to you. So, you skied for. Uh, I keep forgetting the name because I keep wanting to think Yup because that was the one that came out recently. North of Now. North of Now, yeah. right? So, how did that come together? What was that all about? Uh, it was my kind of new experience mm-hmm. for me mm-hmm. yeah, because yeah, I didn't go to the Freeride World Tour, which means I stayed in town. Mm-hmm. And then Sami was linking me up and I was very stoked yeah, ski with Sami because I was grown, growing up on a ski movie 10 years ago, like MSP, Poor Boys, yep. yeah, TGL, something, something like that. I was watching to him and then I was kind of growing up was he, Sami is a good guy and then he's living in town, I knew it. And then, yeah, summertime, yeah, Sami was stopped by a food truck. I think that is a kind of funny Is that how you guys right? met? You came yeah, in yeah, a food yeah, truck? Yeah, I, I knew yeah. he was a skier running yeah. inside. I wanted to go yeah, out to right. him. Yeah, yeah. Right. So you guys met at the food truck, Sammy's. What did, what do you serve there? We never actually asked. Uh, Sammy is kind of vegetarian. It's yep. uh, yeah, I serve kind of veggie rice bowl stuff. Vegetable rice yeah, bowls, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. all I've ever got. So, so you're rolling in <laughs> for good. you're rolling in for veggie rice bowls and you start talking about skiing and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I knew I'd seen you on the Free Ride World Tour. Like yeah. I try and yeah, tune yeah. into those. I'd seen them and yeah, just wanted to support them, yeah. support them over there. And yeah. he's a good guy. We got along super well and. Just, yeah, the skiing, the passion together. Yeah, you know, thank you. <laughs> trying to roll with people yeah. that, yeah. you know, have the same. The yeah. same, and, and also, like, the same vibes, too, but also skill level, too, right? That's what I mean, yeah, trying. Right? Yeah, exactly. And I know you're, 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 like, you know, the same, you know, like, the, you get the same vibe, the same skill level, the same kind of dedication. I don't think not the same skills. Not well, same I know, skill. okay, let me, let me tell you this, right? Yeah, there's yeah. people, like, <laughs> like this, there's regular people, yeah, and then yeah. there's people that ski every day, yeah. at live at ski hills and do that sort yeah, of thing. yeah. 
and then there's people that just have that natural talent that yeah. allows them to be like a Sammy Carlson okay. or be able to make the free ride roll tour yeah. like that shit's gnarly have you ever thought about going and doing a free ride roll tour event I did once yeah you did I one? did yeah but I'm not but I, after I stopped competing I just really have like no desire to kind of get back in that environment right and yeah. My only, I, I would be down to do it more. I just is like, it's such a shame the conditions. Like, I wish it was, I know, understand, like, it's super difficult to have all the athletes there and like, a lot of keep timing. Them all, yeah. yeah. Keep them true. till the conditions get yeah. good. But it's just, yes, yeah, for where I was at, at least at the time, yeah, just not uh, too interested in trying to go like throw yeah. down on hard pack. Yeah. yeah, fair enough. Yeah. yeah. He was like, on he's just like, like, I'm like, down with that, though. So, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, you're getting veggie rice bowls and you're becoming yeah. friends. Like, do you just start skiing one day on the hill or do you, like, meet up and go yeah. for a backcountry lap? Or uh, I think first time Sammy said, um, Sammy has a big trampoline. No, a trampoline, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 And then, yeah, Sammy it. said, yeah you, yeah, you can join the trampoline, you can some practice. That's like summertime. Practice, yeah, yeah, practice yeah, backflips. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Yeah, kinda, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Do you still have your trampoline? Yeah, I do. We just got to set it up. Nice. Put it in, yeah. Um, I was debating selling it. Are you going to dig a hole and then... Yeah, we got a spot. It's all cleared. We um, I almost put it in this this summer, but I went on a surf trip. Surf trip? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you gotta, yeah. You can either pay for a tractor to dig a hole. Well, you get a tractor, you can just like rent a, a bucket. No, or you have yeah, to, I got to get somebody to come over. You can either pay for, for the pay to dig a hole or you can go surf for a few Well, weeks. I just missed the, the window he had, but... Oh, that's yeah. All good. <laughs> Whoops, sorry about that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a crash. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, just knocked, I just knocked over the picture. Sorry, bud. It's all good, dude. So, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, just... we can, no, we connected, like, yeah, like, through that, and then yeah. we're up and around the ski hill, yeah. and then when COVID hit, like, a lot of the people that I was used to skiing with couldn't come up anymore. Right. So, like, yeah. you and I were just here. Just shredding. And Vince yeah. and I, yeah, COVID yeah. was weird. It was such a weird time. Like, right. when it yeah. actually happened, they, like, shut the backcountry down. Because you couldn't, yeah. yeah, couldn't go anywhere, you couldn't do anything. And then the and mountains were strange, too. Well, yeah, the mountain closed. Then they yeah. closed, they stopped forecasting, and there was just kind of this local, just shaming, like, throughout the community, people going out. But it was crazy, because Henrik Carlo had just showed up in town. Oh, really? He was in Norway, and, yeah. like... There was talks of like the world basically shutting down, so he just like literally with his filmer just booked the ticket to get here as fast as he could before yeah. everything shut down. Wow! And I think he got here like a day or two before they closed the border. Oh jeez! Yeah, but it was hectic because it was <clears throat> like it was so good conditions were all time when he showed up. Right. Yeah. And we were like in a good groove, but I really knew that like just the vibe around yeah. town was like people not were great. not yeah. stoked on people going out. So we like, and he had to do his quarantine as well with his buddy. Yeah. So we would like meet up, kind of hang out, keep our distance, yeah. but we weren't doing any shredding for the first little bit, which was like kind of killing me inside, but I didn't want to tell Dolo how good it was out yeah, there. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like staring out the window, like a week yeah. of sun, perfect snow that we couldn't uh, get out and, yeah. and enjoy. But then after a week of that, I call, I contacted like the local pilot who if something does go wrong, he's going to be the one coming to pick pick you up right yeah. and just like ask them like hey would would you come like we want to go out and shoot yeah. would you come pick us up if something goes wrong and he was down to do it right, so i right. felt like we had kind of like our own little like safety program in place in the hospital there was like no cases in town at that time so it wasn't like gonna put i didn't feel like we were gonna be right right and you know it's, it's no one knew what to do or what not yeah. to do and like <laughs> some people were like screw you i'm not wearing a mask and your government's out to get us and people are like just get your fucking shot do what's right you know it's like no one knew what's going on yeah but we call it like the covid downgrade you know like this tone it back a little bit when we were out there <laughs> fair fair enough. Enough. Like, fair enough. Then, just like fair enough covid downgrade so that's when you guys first started riding together then well, the next year. Well, the, the next, next year. year, yeah, yeah, that's right. So the, that was through in the next next winter when things were still kind of funky. Yeah, yeah. and your butt, yeah. So you're we like, start. oh, sweet, I got a guy to shred with in town now. Yeah, exactly. Like Vince, Vince for sure, but he's not always. He's got his own life and stuff too. Yeah, so, but it's always good to add someone to the crew. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And we started, yeah, got going ski touring a bit yeah. Yeah. off the hill, up, up to some other spots, and yeah. But always kind of inspired from him. My image before skiing with him, yeah, Sammy was more freestyle guy. Right. I know he's. Uh, Back country is good, and then also park is good. Yeah. But I didn't know he Ski, skiing off like the ski jumps, like the Olympic, <laughs> the Olympic ski jumps and shit, right? Like, I mean, I kind of his all of kind of personality, mm-hmm. and, uh, skills, experience, right. knowledge, everything kind of has come next level. Right. Yeah, I didn't know that, and then ski with him, I I'm got a lot of inspired. Right. And then my motivation is keep it up. Yeah, Have you been trying to teach him some more freestyle tricks? 
Me? Ah, <laughs> have, you been trying, own. have you been trying to get him to teach you some more free No. So when you I make just, it back on the tour, you can like do those double backflips like Max I, Palm and I, I Abel. Yeah, they did it. Yeah. yeah, but maybe not my style. Yeah. yeah. He's You're, got his own style. You've so. got more of the... Uh, more of the same style as like Reina and uh, yeah, Reina and, and, and Imar, yeah, Imar, yeah, just straight and yeah. big and yeah. stomp. That's why you can do that. Because have you seen Imar's legs? They're I massive, know, same yeah. as yours. I did an interview with Imar Navarro in yeah. Switzerland right before, yeah. um, like the Verbia Extreme last year, and yeah. he was in the room. We did it in a hotel room, and he did it yeah. in his shorts, and his legs were like horse. They, yeah, they, like, horse, <laughs> and they're like twitching and I was like jeez man like they're scaring me yeah, just yeah. being able to stomp like a 40 foot cliff at like yeah. mock chicken speed just yeah. boof mm-hmm. yeah. like it's not and that's the kind of style you're at right yeah I like it but after I got the injury my mind's a little shifting now mm-hmm. yeah. so you're gonna start doing some more like de- like you're gonna throw a spin off of big cliffs <laughs> <laughs> not spin, but so I like I want to run more freestyle stuff right, right, yeah right. I'm getting old but still, I want to keep it up right, right. Yeah, by myself. What, what do you think about that with the Freestyle World Tour, the way that it's going now? Yeah. It's shifting a little bit? To I think so, yeah. Judges like more freestyle tricks, right? Do you think yeah. it's because of kind of the conditions we've had the last couple of years? You can't um, really go big. In, I know, but I no. don't know. I think judges just like it. More mm-hmm. big mountain style. Yeah, um, it's just like anything, the right? Just yeah, it's just, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like anything, yeah. like any sport, like hockey. Back in back in the day, you had big, yeah. big bruising teams with like big, heavy defensemen, yeah. and now yeah. that doesn't work anymore. You got to get fast, skilled guys. Like every yeah, every sport, right, like right. football, I'm sure yeah. it's the same there. Yeah, yeah for same sure. same yeah. thing with skiing, yeah, right? Yeah, I think so. And then lot of young age in the win. I'm not too right? Or my 20. Yeah, younger kids, right? Younger right. Kids, How yeah. old are you? You Me? Yeah, yeah. 37 this yeah, year. Yeah, right? And you're still competing. You and Raina's back on the tour this year. I know. He's, I was right. He's 40, right? Right. Yeah. Holding it down. Is, so that, is he the South American? No, Raina Barkred. He's uh, Swiss. Sweden. Okay. Oh, sorry, pardon okay. me. Sweet, okay. Swiss. 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 Sweden. I had my, yeah, this is like my second podcast today. It's been a long day. <laughs> Swedish. Swiss. Yeah, he's Swiss. Swedish. 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 Um, but yeah, he's the same kind of style. Just point it straight, stomp. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, do you feel like the like you need to change things up, or are you just happy? Uh, I'm still happy when I change in revolution, and the next generation doing the very well. Right, uh, right. I'm happy with that. Yeah, but still, someone need to big grind and the big jump. Yeah, go straight grind. Still. Yeah. Big jumps go yeah, straight. Yeah, 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 sweet. So, do you guys have like ideas? Are you gonna work together again on something this this winter? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. We've been talking about a couple of different ideas. See yeah. what comes together. Yeah, what can yeah. you share? Any any kind of any kind of. <laughs> no, you don't have to tell no, us the no, whole no, thing. No, no. Just like, are you going to be doing any trips? Is there a theme? Well, or pot- you just- yeah, potentially we talk about trying to do like a a segment for Matchstick or one of the other companies to mm-hmm. just get out and shred yeah. together and yeah. just get a like a filmer from town or yeah, or just yeah, one of their filmers to just yeah, right, yeah, yeah. kind of yeah. shred together and. Because you've like you've always, there. you've always been on the tour, right? So you haven't really had as much time to yes. start filming. Yeah, yeah. And actually, when I found out that you had done some filming, I was actually excited because I, I, I like to see, like, for real tour athletes are some of the best skiers on the face of the planet. The the, the stuff yeah. that you guys are able to do in one run without having skied it before, on yeah. the worst conditions ever. Yeah. That if you're given a little bit of time, and and you can take safety precautions you can think <laughs> about a line you can wait for the weather you can get it yeah. when it's right and plan yeah. it yeah and it's just one run right, right. and to, right. to see what it's did. not that different from it's the same thing when you're filming right, right. Just, yeah. you I still mean, have to nail the it but conditions you a, we're not going to ride when it's like true bulletproof true, true. And, yeah, yeah exactly so yeah. it's it's it's, it's the, slightly different but yeah it's, but it's still like that you get one shot pretty much like one or two yeah you know so it's still but yeah, then also, definitely. also too, you can like ski line, and then next year be like, I'm gonna redemption on that and come back to it. But right? don't they go back to the same venues? Like I guess that's true. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah good, yeah, yeah. good point. I just, yeah, I think that they should really make a make it a like they gotta make sure to just get the conditions right. It's not fair. It's so like always kills me to watch the. Oh man, yeah, it, it's and the, like last out. year they were so choked because they got yeah. skunked almost the entire season. It's just yeah. a matter of where they went, and it's just the timing. Yeah, right. Yeah. I'm hoping this year everywhere they go, it's just deep pow. I love watching free ride real tour events when there's like pow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I want to just watch. So yeah, to get, right. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I want to ski it too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I hope they get it this year. It's right. Fun. So, what did you? How did you find? 
What did you find were differences that you liked about the filming versus the tour? Oh, uh, sorry, I'm not understand from that. So the, the so the tour you're very familiar with. Yeah. You, you understand. Yeah, yeah. It's I go to this event. I yeah. go to this event. Yeah. I take yeah. a month off with my family. Yeah. I go yeah. and go and go. Yeah. But with filming, yeah, it's different. Oh yes, yes, totally different. Right. Yeah. And yeah. do you, are there certain parts of it that you like more? Uh, uh, yeah, I honestly, I'm not competing guy. It's competing is sometimes tough. Yeah, free ride world tour was, of course, I was enjoying it. Mm-hmm. That's kind of sometimes fifty percent fun, but fifty percent more stressful. Right. Brutal. Yeah, thinking about too much. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> but filming is more fun for me. Right. Less yeah. stressful. Right. Yes. Yes. A little slower pace. And but... not less stressful. <laughs> filming is for now. Especially kind of shooting with Sami. Oh, yeah. I feel more pressure on it. Oh, really? Look, look what you're doing to this guy, man. <laughs> he puts it on himself. <laughs> so when we shoot in the uh, first time on heli in the uh, north of now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sami takes me uh, kind of heli shooting. Mm-hmm. And then Sami said, oh, you are so nervous. Oh, give him more smile. <laughs> I'm giving about that. Yeah, yeah. Try and calm him down. Yeah. Calm yeah. him down. How, did, calm he, him how down. did he do on that first day? Killed it, yeah. Yeah, he, skied, yeah, yeah. he skied a super, pretty gnarly line through yeah. a bunch of exposure and mm-hmm. rocks, and then a big old yeah. backy. Yeah, stomp first tee. Yeah. Nice. Of course yeah. he did. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, it was really nice. He's killed it. Yeah. Super fun. Yeah, we had a lot of fun shredding yeah. together. Yeah. Definitely. But I'm, yeah, I'm kind of similar vibe with contests. Even when I was competing a bunch back in the day, it was more like I was excited to have the opportunity to push myself and compete, but I wasn't like some shark like competitor. You know, like right. I kind of showed up with my plan. Mm-hmm and just like you weren't worried about everybody else yeah exactly i just kind of had the tricks i wanted to do and like yeah i kind of do that and that was like basically yeah, my game plan i wasn't really trying to switch it up too too much mm-hmm. i was just more excited like i'm having the opportunity to like get so many laps and like yeah. especially x games training i always remember that like you'd show up there and then when you leave your riding would just be like on a completely new level level because you get like four or five days before the contest of just on like, like the best jump in the yeah, world yeah on the best like yeah, yeah three jump course sick <clears throat> rail rail section and you'd be getting sled laps like three hours like for four or five and days you're not, and you're not and in like then, a public park either trying to like wait for people to go or to like have people yeah. sit there and stare at you and, yeah and the, yeah and the course was just like so tight that you had mm-hmm. to just be like so on it with all your chicks and like just your speed checks in between the jump. You know, if you made like the yeah. smallest mistake, you're just like your and whole run. And the question small. for you with that is like knowing that you're doing these jumps on in this zone, and it's everything set up for you to do that then, and you know there's the safety, there's safety people on site, everybody's watching. The response time is like this. What do you, you mean? Like on, on X Games and stuff like that, right? Yeah. When you were competing, did did. And you said you you come out, you can get all those laps and you can really get it dialed in. And when you leave, you're on another level. Yeah. Is part of it knowing that if something does go wrong, that you have medical teams, you have support teams, that sort of stuff. Like, is is that no. an element of comfort to it as well? No, I meant more so like you the amount of riding you get and the repetition. You just like bang, bang, bang. Right. You get to like practice so much before the actual event, and you're riding at such a high level that yeah. then just like coming out of that event, I always just felt like so ready to go and that would usually be like my last event of the year and then i just go out and like film a part right or like back then i used to film like three parts right yeah like tgr poor boys msp yeah. all one year <laughs> it's amazing you're like, able to do wow. all yeah yeah i was like yeah <laughs> when's the last time anybody's done like msp tgr at the same year does that happen know. anymore i'm not sure because it's all based on like you know sponsors and things right it's like yeah we're like, gonna sponsor this film this yeah, company's gonna sponsor that yeah, film and that's yeah. pretty much how it gets set up yeah with. some yeah sometimes you can get you can kind of slide in if you got a little status maybe they'll like let you get in mm-hmm. depending do on do you guys have any uh sponsor co- common sponsors no nope. no but quicksilver and monster yeah super cool like that they just want they're like yeah use the man let's yeah, go yeah they're down yeah they're down and they just yeah want to support the project and like, yeah nice. that's also pretty cool they give me a lot of creative freedom but i was i was trying uh saying about competing I guess with like the free world tour and now I just feel like to go back to that environment it's just like you know not, not really for you anymore. Like, yeah like even at the end of X I was just like initially like so excited to go to these competitions because the courses were super next level you'd show yeah. up and see yeah. like the craziest yeah. jump line rail lines were like super next level always like the best setups mm-hmm. and then I like as I got older and started getting more into the backcountry yeah. just started like feeling like building jumps on top of cliffs and like how big you actually go and like the air just the yeah. overall feeling it was like yeah. so exciting and felt so fresh yeah. i would kind of start like 
I guess towards the end, I wasn't putting as much emphasis on like riding park and training. Right. Like I'd literally be like morning of the contest and watching Nicholas Mueller, his video part, like riding oh, around yes. and shit. Just like, <laughs> so like yeah, yeah. ready to go. Yeah. The final straw was I showed up to one of the like first World Cup events and I went through the course and like showed up kind of being like, man, maybe yeah. I should have like rode more park before coming here. And then I went through the course and like normally I would just roll in and like speed check the jumps, but like rolled in the first one kind of added up like oh yeah i got this boom hit it second one same thing hit it and then i was expecting to stop for the third one and i just went off it and it felt so small and like kind of lame to the feelings that i was compared getting. to what you were building out here yeah really? i was just like i remember just like skiing through the finish line i was like i'm done with this like mm. it's the last time i leave pow to come ride i love there. how <laughs> i love how you're at a world cup you're like this is lame yeah, yeah, I was over it. <laughs> yeah i was ready to and I find that fascinating too because you've done it all right and you're skiing this stuff and like this is kind of easy for me it wasn't like oh this is easy I can you know go through a season and cash a bunch of you know collect a bunch of checks but you're like ah it's not for me yeah it just felt yeah I I felt like I was just my passion was like slipping for that and staying true to the skiing yeah well exactly like as a skier all I'm like everything was like telling me just come here and then it was like kind of the, the pressure from sponsors yeah. or like maybe the financial mm-hmm. element of it like to yeah. continue doing that and right i think we talked about this before but probably like and when yeah. she passed away that really hit me hard so i was just like wanted to really focus yeah. my energy on like what i actually wanted to be doing just because there is so much risk involved with right. it and right. like yeah. what happened to her was just such a freak accident that it's like that can happen to me at any moment and i want to make sure i'm just like doing exactly what i want to be doing doing for something the right reasons doing something worthwhile yeah. and like yeah. yeah also the judges kind of started the, the level was always like continuing to like every year was like progressing so much which i loved that part of it too right it kept me on my game right but i just yeah started like not kind of agreeing with the judges like what they wanted to see is like oh, i got like a completely different outlook kind of on yeah what like I you you, you evolved and they evolved but you were evolving in different directions yeah so you're like you know what i've done this i yeah. like i don't need to prove anything else i'm not nah, yeah. me fuck carlson nah, right? I just felt like, <laughs> it's not like that i know i know you're, nah, i just felt yeah. good yeah, yeah after right. I, and like, you're like when, and you're like oh, it's time to move on to the next phase yeah exactly yeah. i was like hungry and yeah super excited about when I left the power, I always felt kind of guilt, guilty about it. Oh, for way. real? I was like, yeah, I need to. <laughs> and, and I learned from, like, just competing, just, like, how important it is. If you want to accomplish something, like, you got to focus on it. And mm-hmm. I started yeah. feeling like, well, I'm giving half here yeah. to the comps. I'm right. giving half over here. Like, you know, why don't I just dive all in? Right. And you've yeah. always been the kind of guy that's been, or you've been very focused on what you've been into. And you've had your evolution that's, you know, obviously very well documented through all the films and whatnot. Do you have that kind of similar mindset moving into the next year or two here? Are there things that, are, like, you're craving to see and do? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It just, yeah, it hasn't really... This last trip to Alaska was definitely probably was telling you, like, the most inspired I've been. Like, when I got back from that trip, I was just like... The one that you filmed for Yup. Yeah, for Yup. Yeah. That was a sick trip, but we didn't quite get it the way like that I want like yeah talk about that because you because it was awesome an awesome film yeah thank um, you yeah, thank uh, you Todd's in it Todd Laguerre's in it yeah Todd Laguerre Vince we were kind of making a little joke because uh, we showed it at uh, at IF3 this year stoked that you came out for that yeah Monster's yeah, a big part of it and we're like oh sweet we're gonna I'm like, I'm like I think we're getting Sammy out too you're, uh, you're like I'm like is he coming I don't know if he's coming maybe yeah. he's coming I, I hope he's coming out. We had a we had a good like good first day at it and Todd was in it. We were kind of making a joke that Todd put on a uh, film festival. He was in like four of the films. Yeah, yeah. Just his like little he had his own bit. He had little little yeah. segments. We we kind of teasing him about it. But yeah, his video turned out sick too. Todd's a rad skier. Man. Yeah, definitely. He, I was impressed. A lot of those shots I had hadn't actually seen. Right. Because mm-hmm. we filmed we had so many shots when I went down to edit. There is like the the assistant editor had pulled a bunch of selects and a few of his shots didn't quite make the that so right it was like whoa that was another like beautiful angle what could we but do we with just this had, yeah. well we just yeah we, in the end you just have to like but yeah it's, but it's sweet because you always do your film but you always you know bring your buds along right mm-hmm. and it's always like like you or todd or vince yeah. people that are like in your inner circle yeah which i think is really awesome because you could easily get another armada athlete or you could get another monster athlete or somebody just to like film for the company Mm -hmm. or for the sponsor yeah right you film you you do what you want to do and you make sure you pump the shit out of them like you're you do really well for your sponsors but you don't do your projects based on them like you don't 
What? You, you don't do your podcast. Oh, I need to get a monster athlete in, yeah. or I need to get this. You All keep right. you keep your inner circle to the to what you're doing, right? Which I always thought thought was really really cool. Like people that are yeah, in your you. life, people that are tight with you as people and as friends yeah, are the yeah. ones that you want to, you know, give love to and be yeah, like, hey, come yeah. and do this, man. This vid- right. it's a Sammy yeah. Carlson film. Yeah. Just from from the history that you had and and who you are and like you've established yourself. Yeah. You put out anything, people are gonna go crazy for it. Like, oh, cool, the new one's out. It's like a Metallica album. New Metallica, <laughs> new Metallica album gets released, or they just announce one. It's gonna go crazy. It'll go number one just because there's that many fans. It's kind of that sort of thing. You're Sammy Carlson. You've been, you've done so much over the course of your career and so many amazing things that you put something out. People are gonna be stoked to watch it. So for you to be able to include someone like you or like Todd or Vince, people that you're close with, I think is really awesome rather than just picking another big name and then bringing them along. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For sure. And then there's also other writers too. I mean, it's yeah, like that year of COVID when I was hanging with you in the mountains, it felt like it was like skiing in Japan has always been like one of my favorite experiences mm-hmm. just like with the culture right. over there. And so when we were hanging, I was like, oh, this is sick. It feels <laughs> like like... We're in Japan, kind of, like, yeah. Yeah. but here in Canada, like, having you and the crew is very refreshing. And Are you guys going to try and do a Japan trip together? I don't think so. <laughs> I'm rebel stuck, yeah. dude. I never know. You uh, could call it. Maybe, though. But I met in uh, Sami in Japan, Hakuba. Yeah. yeah. Jackie and Sami and me went to the temple yeah. in Hakuba. You, you got, oh, so you went, oh, the two of you went with Jackie at the same time. So we were talking well, about this before. We got to give a shout out to Jackie. Yeah, Jackie-san. Yeah. Hey, Jackie. Jackie. We love you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Jackie, just a uh, quick sidebar. Uh, I used to live with Jackie back in the day, and we did a LPP Japan series in like 2015. Oh, yeah. And That's I did an episode. Yeah. I did an episode with You're doing podcast back then. Yeah, man, this yeah. is tenth year, Ooh, season ten. Congratulations! Thanks, man. Mm-hmm. Um, but we did one with Jackie, and then uh, Yuto Ueno, and I think Jackie, yeah. if I remember correctly, Jackie helped to um, uh, translate on oh, one okay. of those episodes yeah. for yeah. me. But anyways, that, that's that's cool that you were both on the same trip with him because he he does uh, like a lot a lot of filming and stuff. I right? think so. Yeah. Yeah. You because yeah that trip was hilarious because I I met up with um, Utah. We know Utah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I text him because I was going for the kind because <laughs> he lives in he lives in Nozawa, right? Nozawa, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I text him from here because it's super last minute. The kind hit me up um, to go on this trip, and so I hit up, I hit up Utah. Being like, hey, I'm coming to Japan. It would be yeah. so sick to see you because we, I would the last couple of Nippon Opens I did, he was there and so he's, he became, was the half pipe coach, right? Yeah, yeah he or, was. Well, at the time he was in the he half was pipe in the half pipe, contest, right? Yeah, right. and slope style. I'm pretty sure at one point. Mm-hmm. So we would always like kind of uh, we got to know each other over the years. So I hit him up, being like, yeah, I'm coming. It'd be sick to see you. I'll let you know when I get there. Like, what's up? Right. And, and then just the language barrier. I maybe told him like the day I was coming or something like that, and right, there was right, some confusion yeah. when I got to the. Like Atlanta you just said, like true Sammy style, like you just told me. Huh? You like Sammy style. Well, no, I told him like yeah, I'll try and meet you when I'm there, right, but right. We're, like I'm going with the kind, and then he like got to the airport, like land in Tokyo. I get text being like, "Yo, like where are you? I'm here, it's from Utah," and I was like, "Oh shit!" And I like. <laughs> You know, I'm supposed to go like completely like the opposite direction to him by like a long ways. Right, right. Um, but he was there, and I'm like, oh damn! So I ended up like uh, calling the kind, like, hey, I'm so sorry. Like my buddy came, met me here. There's some confusion, and I just roll with him to go. Like I uh, went, and he had set up a, a ski day with, with you, little, not with you, no, not that. Um, but that's where I met Jackie. Yeah, like, okay, yeah. Through Utah, because he had set up like a ski day with the local crew right, right. with me. So right. there was like 40, 50 local kids oh, oh really the ski, ski with, with Sam yeah, yeah, yeah. So nice. I gotta go yeah, <laughs> right, so I right. called the kind and then I ended up meeting up with them a few days later but it was a really sick experience nice to, yeah fly in Japan like wow. get the real traditional yeah. like, dude I authentic think authentic experience I th- yeah I think in uh, next fall yeah. it's gonna be nothing but Japan and it's no one could go for three years so now everyone's gonna wa- everyone I wanna go yeah, back yeah, everyone's yeah. gonna wanna go back I keep hearing that yeah I think it's gonna be busy this winter season I would watch that I would watch a, like a web series of you guys of Japan. like do like a like a two or three part web series where you just like travel to Japan you yeah. can go to Hood or something like that or just, <laughs> like you should do a three part web series you could do a, like a Revy series yeah. or a Canada series <laughs> maybe go to Japan yeah. and then bring them down to Hood wow <laughs> I'd watch that that'd be sick yeah. I'm, I'm gonna put I think it I'll in. let everyone go to Japan and 
Right, yeah, right yeah. <laughs> swerve. Everyone's going to be in Japan this year. Yeah. Go swerve. I'm sure you got your plans that you don't want to. You don't want to let. You like to. Keep I got your, a couple plans. You I'm actually. Plans your chest. I actually have more planned this year than I've been in a long time, which feels pretty good. How come? Because. I got plans, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I got plans. Yeah, I'm always just kind of, it's, yeah, I'm so fortunate to live here and like have a crew that I can kind of be a little flexible and, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but that was also planned. Like that was part of why I moved Yeah, exactly. Here, that's you know? why you moved here, right? That's um, why, that's the whole point of that, that kind of letter. You're like, this is, this is kind of the right place to be. Yeah. Now, qu question for you, yeah. right? So obviously you were tour, you were on the tour and stuff. Speaking yeah. of travel, yeah. you're on the tour and you had your set travel days, but now that you're not on the tour and yeah. you're a business owner and you're yeah. a dad yeah. and a husband yeah. is your wife still like all right cool go go away or is she not like hey oh, yes. stick around a little bit more mm -hmm. um, no still wife is a, a tons of corporate to me right yeah that's why i'm still skiing well fantastic in do you yeah. do you have these conversations with her where she's she, like hey man like it's almost time she, to slow down <laughs> she used a shredder too though oh uh, yeah she used to wreck it yeah before we had a kid mm -hmm. yeah she's yeah Skied a lot. I'm not snowboarding. Okay. But doing very well. Yeah. Mm. But she got the big injury in the whistler. Okay. She she broke on the helpus. Her like like her leg. Yes. Femur. Uh, no. Or hip. Hip. Oh gee. Or pelvis. Pelvis. Oh Jesus. Yeah. Not her birthday. On her birthday, <laughs> yes. she broke her wife broke her pelvis on her birthday. Yeah. And then at oh. that time, I was shooting in here, Ruby. Mm -hmm. And then I got the call from my friend. Hey, do you know Hitomi was? going on today oh today yeah her birthday right no 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 she went to the vancouver phone got the surgery and then broken pelvis oh, she oh. didn't tell you your her uh, friend had to tell you my friend tell me oh jesus she didn't she, she so then you drove right back as quick as uh, no i <laughs> stay here and then still keep on the filming yeah and oh. then after a week back to the home and then she was laying on the bed oh my god but we have the two kids now. So two kids she, now. Yeah, she's healthy. Now. She's healthy. So the, the little one's almost ready to go to school. Yep. So then they'll both be in school soon, and then you guys can both go skiing. Yeah. Do you ski together still? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Actually, tomorrow uh, I'm going to take all that one. Well, yeah, the yeah. older kid. Yeah. Did, do you snowboard too? Me? Yeah. Uh, it's sometimes. Yeah, with yeah. the wife or with the kids or something like that. Just to go, uh, when just you have go. to go a little slower. Yeah, go slower. Yeah, but the last three years, I was just focused on the competing. Mm -hmm. I was just on the skiing, 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 skiing. But this year, it's more flexibility. Right. Yeah, open mind. Are you yeah. are you excited to like see the kids grow up and get better skiing? Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. Is, is that yeah. some of your funnest days on the mountain? I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My kids are already, hey, dad, I want to hit some cliff. I want to, I like some pub. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Fantastic. Good for you, man. Way to raise them right. Yeah, Way to raise them right. Adorable. Right? It's definitely. Well, I'm excited to see, like, do you ever uh, ever need, like, a babysitter? Would you get Sammy to do some babysitting for you? Oh, yeah, we were just talking about it. <laughs> He's gonna babysit. They're going to babysit Neptune or doggy sit. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you, you guys don't have a pet? Uh, no, yet. But no, we won't. Yeah, so this will be, like, Neptune will be, like, a trial run. Yeah. yeah, yeah. See how good. it goes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you should. Getting a dog is the best. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I left, I left Cedar back at the at the place I'm staying Good tonight. Good over. Yeah, uh, uh, too much going on this week, man. Yeah, yeah. Too much going on, sure. figuring it she's out. She's at JJ's? Yeah, they're there, because there's a couple other dogs there, and yeah, yeah. She's, oh, yeah. she's chilling. And, like, the, my, I don't have a truck right now, so I borrowed, obviously, because I smashed my truck the other day. Mm -hmm. I haven't talked about it on the podcast yet, oh, but yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk about it in an intro or something like that. Yeah. So I'm just I trying mean, to keep her in one place and just keep her kind of chill and comfortable chill. for a little yeah. bit, right? Yeah. That was... Look at that bone over there. She would have. Oh, she would have been. They would have been gone. Yeah, would have been done. It's it's we been would here for like two years. I got that for Neptune for Christmas. I think like two, maybe three years. Oh, ago. for real? Yeah, she's only. Yeah, she doesn't really. All we'd be big. doing the podcast, and all you'd hear in the background. <laughs> she'd be over there. Like, it'd be finished. It'd yeah. be done. Yeah. Um. So you, yeah. you've got. Uh, so you guys are gonna do some projects this winter together. Anything else besides working with Sammy that you're gonna end up doing? Well, we, um, we don't know what we're doing. You no, know, but the plan of, is just yeah, to like see what shred, happens. Just try and yeah. shred. And yeah. I think, are you doing the, are you not doing Golden? Uh, I'm going to Golden on the World Tour mm -hmm. in January. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm going to bring the food truck. Uh, yeah, that's right. You were saying, yeah, yes. I'm, I'm excited about that, right? Because uh, yeah. your peak performance no is... Competing. No competing. No competing. No. I thought you took the wild card, no? <laughs> no yeah, we're so. So. Let's keep pushing him. Keep pushing him, man. <laughs> see, if he'll, see if he'll do it. Um, but yeah, so... 
Uh, Peak Performance is one of your partners. They're a sponsor yeah. of my show. They're also a sponsor of the Free Ride World Tour podcast, yeah. which I do, as well as like the Free Ride World Tour. Yeah. Um, so they're awesome. So I'm, that's one of the reasons I was stoked to get you on. I'm like, I, you like, let's do a podcast. You're like, oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, although you're like, I think so. Yeah. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. So good. Yeah, yeah, way better. You're too humble, man. You're, you're, you're too too humble. Do you did you find um, like when, obviously you speak to your kids at home in Japanese? Oh yes, and yeah. English? At home always, yeah, Japanese, yeah. Right. Because sometimes kind of each uh, between the kids, mm -hmm. yeah, speak in English, but try to speak in the Japanese. I say you keep them, keep it up, yeah. right? Absolutely, because yeah, yeah. that'll be very valuable. Yeah, because uh, when we, when they go to the school, just a hundred percent on uh, English, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So they're, at home, they'll probably start teasing you yeah. about your yeah. about your English soon. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. when, question for you. So this is another thing that I do. Okay. If if I ever have kids, I always thought I'd do this. Is if when they start yeah. learning like English or they go to school for another language. Yeah. I'd probably start doing it with them. Yeah. Like do the school books. <laughs> do you find that with the kids who are now starting to learn English yeah. and you're helping them with their language and stuff, is that helping your English skills? Mm, not really. Still kids speaking the Japanese to me. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. But always my kids say, Your English is too bad, your pronounce is too bad. Yeah, yeah they're teasing you about it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah, yeah. They are teaching me. Yeah, even today I, I told my kids today I'm gonna go podcast and then for the hundred percent for the English and then my kids said, Okay, I'm gonna go with you. <laughs> Translate. <laughs> oh for real? Yeah, that's awesome. What a cool kid. Sweet. So um yeah, so Sammy, back to yep, yeah, the big project, the biggest. That's like, is that your number one you consider this year? What's that? The yep project. My number one. Yeah, I don't know. It's definitely. Do you, been, it's like your kids. You don't have a favorite. I don't have a favorite. No, I had a lot of fun on this one, and I'm really happy and like proud of how it turned out. Yeah, people for were sure. with, people the, were with the music. On it. Like we cleared the odds. Oh yeah, that's right. Perfect. I was gonna ask you. Thanks for bringing that yeah. up. You guys. But so. before we go, I want to go back to what you're saying. Okay, about please. Just like. Yeah, why I film with my friends or like oh, yeah. maybe people that are just a little bit unexpected sometimes. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I don't know if unexpected is the or, word. Yeah, but just like yeah, not not like fully make. Uh, I, I know guess, what you mean. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, like with Armada, there's other athletes that I would like to film with, and a lot of friends that I am close with that have that type of support just have their own yep. like projects going on. Right, so right. Initially, when I started out with like the Sammy C project, I had like a pretty all star cast right. of riders in there right right and then like as it just everything started unfolding everyone got so busy that was going to be involved that it was just hard to like actually right get everyone together to spend enough time to make something that right 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 that would be special you know and so i just yeah just kind of ended up filming more with like yeah people that are around in the area or like right. just close to me in in life mm -hmm. and then also have time too and aren't too busy right right but right. it's super yeah it's always fun because like, with covid and everything like that's a good point like and that's not really the point i was making but with covid and everything everyone's got their own shit going on like no one knows what's well, happening I mean, and well, then like the, yeah well that was extra complicated but right, with them right. working like a lot of people are doing their own projects and stuff mm -hmm. now you know so or maybe working on a segment with another film exactly company so do you think that's kind of the that's kind of the way things are going now right too everybody's doing their own little bit of their own little projects oh, yeah. and then people are kind of hopping in and hopping out like it's not necessarily like the TGRs and the MSPs anymore and it's more like you know you, you do a project someone's gonna hop in on it and there's like Torrin and Jossie's project which had yeah, like so much you know, CeeLo and Parker on it and like you know so everybody's kind of like it's kind of the way life's going right now yeah right? it's cool man everybody's kind of weaving in and out with each other and get it out there more yeah. more 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 right does that do you feel stressed doing that having to do that do what like content 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 uh not not today. really well i don't i'm lucky to not it's just so great to like skiing for quick and monster they give me so much creative freedom right at right. this point that i can kind of focus on what i'm passionate about and it's work it's the like, smart yeah, move too yeah yes. and then i'm not too like getting too much pressure from them to like stay up or like po post them enough to right you know and try and just yeah. but it's definitely not like it's hard to go wake up at 4 a.m go you know work all day like ski your ass off yeah. build and jump sled and get home try and eat dinner and then wake up at 4 a.m like again and do it like and try and find like an hour to do yeah, an to instagram do some... post or something <laughs> in the middle right you can't yeah you can't it's just not really my focus i guess I, it kind of takes away actually from like what i like about being in the mountains and like getting away from all that and right just, like yeah, trying to just be in the moment and not. You'd rather like, make a, you'd rather make like one big statement than a bunch of little insignificant ones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Exactly. Okay, to, I don't know. Yeah, to, just, to, to the music. Mm. 
So you had Ozzy's No More Tears on. Yeah. And I was like, what? And I remember, <laughs> the, I remember the last time I had a what moment was another one of your segments with Black Sabbath. Uh-huh. And I was like, how the hell did you get Black Sabbath? And it's interesting, too, because I know you're like, you, you're, you're what like a little. What segment was that? I don't remember. Black didn't Sabbath? didn't you do? Didn't Black you do like Sabbath a paranoid thing. or something, or like I a Black Sabbath tune? Maybe I don't know. I, I swear it was you. It's not, okay, movie ski movie nerds, um, call me out on this one. Black Sabbath. Paranoid? Didn't you have a? Didn't you have? I maybe on Insta. I could have like. Maybe put it wasn't on. Out. Maybe just like a short edit. I'm gonna think of this because I, I. I put some Black Sabbath on my Instagram for sure. Maybe I thought you had a Black Sabbath segment in one of your songs. Somebody <laughs> did. I thought it was you. Maybe. All right, maybe I may have just put my foot in my mouth, but if I didn't, call me out, put it in the comments, or just send me a DM, being like, "You're an idiot. Do your <laughs> research." Yeah, um, I'm not sure, but, but that's what I that maybe that's the memory. But anyways, you got that Aussie track, which is a classic track. It went yeah. so well with the footage. How did you end up? Because that, that can't be cheap, man. Thank you. No, we were we um that was actually the first song we slotted in there when we first started working on the film and everyone was just so down. Now, was that your, cause I, look. sorry to interrupt you, mm-hmm. cause I know you listen to a ton of different style of music. I know yeah. you're big into hip hop, that sort of thing. And it, I was like an Aussie track. Mm. I love that. Yeah. That but I wanted just... to find out, was that like your decision or is it just kind of a, like, how did group, that come about? Group decision for sure. Mm-hmm. I was definitely down with it the whole time, but one of the assistant editors actually had thrown it in. He threw that out there, mm-hmm. like no more tears. Right. And it just hit, like it worked so well with the skiing and footage. Right, right. I was super about it, yeah, from the first time. But to be honest, we didn't, like, we had it slotted in and we never, we tried kind of early on in the editing, like when I was there, it's been like a week kind of just dissecting all the footage, trying to organize everything. And like we, messed around with a couple of their songs but it was never there was ne- like not one that was close to like hitting the same that way just, yeah mm-hmm. right so we just kind of started yeah like yeah. editing away to that thing and in the back of my mind I kind of was I think everyone was probably thinking like well, what happens if we can't clear it right because it's a huge song from a huge artist that yeah it, it, and it was probably not not cheap for sure I mean it was it surprisingly isn't as expensive as you would think mm-hmm. we had uh, working with Cooney Pearson which all those guys are legends like such an honor to work with those dudes yeah. and who's who are they uh blake vincent cooney and uh, tommy pearson mm-hmm. uh they the cooney pearson but um they're more from the surf world just oh just agent, agents agents and yeah. post-production crew yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and so they produced north and now or did the post-production on north and now and then this last one mm-hmm. yup and yeah it's always been super fun working with them nice. they're just so creative and yeah. Yeah, always a we always uh, have a good time working together. Well, you guys but yeah, are... they just like yeah they had it that one and everyone was pretty psyched on that song, so we just like yeah committed to it basically. And then their music supervisor, she's just super on it. And every time I was kind of in the back of my mind thinking like, well, maybe we should like start thinking about a backup getting track. a backup track. Right. There was like some sort of positive movement on yeah. the on the track, mm-hmm. so we just like stuck with it. And then it was like kind of getting up to be like maybe like two weeks before we needed to send this thing off yeah. and we had made some positive momentum and like one of my buddies knew jack the son of ozzy okay so we reached out to him to try and like get us right on the inside and to blake, c- connect to the right people yeah blake yeah. works um does a, or kind of started off i guess in the surf world now he's doing all sorts of stuff but he had just made a video for john john florence where they use ozzy too mm-hmm. so he was out i think i threw black sabbath like a song out like let's use this black sabbath track and he was like no no way like it's not gonna clear right, right. we just tried but we can clear ozzy i bet you said. that and, like i don't know why you wouldn't want to either be like oh they're putting it to cool stuff people are gonna be stoked on this because it looks awesome people are gonna yeah. find out about my music so, yeah, yeah. And, and you keep coming to us for songs sure here <laughs> yeah. you go like, they were psyched. but um yeah, so they were psyched for us to use it, but then in the end, it was actually looking like it was going to be cheap. Where I was like pretty surprised, and right. how, and then in the end, we had to do like there was like some sort of language twist in the contract with Quicksilver, and then it ended up uh, basically like being a lot more than we were originally planned for. So yeah, we're over budget and Quicksilver. We're gonna need a little help there. Uh, so <laughs> we just started that conversation, yeah. but I think they're gonna step up and help yeah, us out. There you that, go. So. That's cool. And like you said, they, they've, they've been longtime partners. Yeah. Monster and Quicksilver have been longtime partners of you for a long time for a yeah. reason. You guys but, work well together and you guys do really cool stuff. Yeah, but that like that isn't the first time either that I've been surprised with just like having kind of like, just like, trying to clear this Aussie track thinking like oh we're not going to be able to clear this and then it works out and just like so many times along the way there's different different artists or athletes that 
all like have some sort of idea with one of the other videos like one of my favorite djs growing up we were looking for music and i just contacted him thinking like this you know full hail mary like just throwing hail marys right, out there right. and like it surprised it surprised me so many times how like if you get a hold of different artists that you think wouldn't be interested how they actually are and like right. are down to help you because they're just regular people too right yeah, and a lot of them exactly. it's like you don't if you don't ask you're not gonna get yeah right exactly if you ask if they say no well then they say no. You're no worse off. But if yeah, you don't ask, it. you're yeah. never gonna know, I'll, right? Yeah, I've gotten real good at accepting no over the, the years. For sure, yeah. I hear it a lot. But then every now and again, you get that yes, and you're just like, yeah, <laughs> boom, nice. Yes, you got awesome. It. Um, so Yup came out what two weeks ago? We could, yeah, and, and people were stoked. Everybody's yeah. posting on it. So it's on the is it the Quicksilver YouTube page? Yeah, Quicksilver YouTube. Yeah, and where's North of Now? Where can they find that? North of Now is also on Quicksilver YouTube. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, super happy with the response. Thank you to everyone uh, sending messages and the people have been sharing. And yeah, we got lots of positive feedback, which feels really good. Like we work so hard on it. So it's always, always nice to have it well received. And like as an athlete, I'm always like, when I put it out, I'm kind of like, I don't know, like, is it always a little dope? nervous? Like, I was th- I'm definitely nervous, but like nervous, but more. I guess I put so much into it every mm-hmm. time. You just want people to like it. Now, are you not at a stage now? Like, like I said, people know when the Sammy Carlson puts out something that they're gonna, people are gonna be stoked on it. Yeah. But yeah. you know, you're skiing well enough. You've done enough of these projects to know like this is good. But there's well, still. Well, now I know. But to be honest, at the, the end of the year, I'm always like. <laughs> That shit, like, wait till you see this next shit. Yeah, because I'm, all, I don't know. It's just, I guess, how my brain works. But, but I appreciate that because as soon as I got back from AK, I'm just like trying to get back up there. I started saying earlier, I was just like making calls, being like, you know, can we score one more little session up there? Yeah. And I almost went, but we got in the end, we got it pretty good. So it's like, ah, it's not gonna be worth. I just love it. You're just so addicted out. to your craft, and but you're uh, so yeah, I just, yeah, I have a. You weren't like, nervous. So you weren't I'm nervous. Not, What's up? You weren't nervous at the the premiere. You were stoked. Yeah, no, no, yeah. No, I felt good. Like I said, I was really happy with how this one like turned out with the music. Yeah. Especially the wham track. Is hype hype to use the wham track. We had that actually cleared last year for North and Now. Mm-hmm. But it was such an honor to have the Jerry Lopez intro, like the VO attached to North and Now that I really felt like everything he was saying and then the ASAP track came on. It was always just kinda like this major just like scratch. Like it just like clash so hard with what he had just yeah. said that i didn't really feel it so we actually had fully edited finished the segment asap and i showed brody jones who's one of the main uh shooters on the projects yeah. and i was kind of waiting for feedback like this because i really felt like the track's good but it just like didn't fit right. in that in that moment with the jerry intro so i had sent it to like the armada like my people i sent it out to people to get a little feedback mm, and everyone right, was right. kind of like well like you know, like their mob boss, like, well, Lars liked it. You know, he's like 12. He's like, Lars loved it. But Sue, oh, she wasn't that into it, like his, his lady. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, yeah I kind of knew that there was. Well, it's this, cool that they're. The, but he was like, go for it. You should yeah, use it. It's right. dope. And then Brody, I showed Brody, and he's like, dude, like, seriously? You're going to use that after that? And I was like, yeah, you're right. It's cool that you got people to be able to tell you, like, no, don't, don't. To be, like, those are, those are people that are good to have on your team. People that can just be like, dude, no, nah, not so much. Yeah. Like, no, it's good. You got to, you got to have people that are going right? to uh, let you know what's S- up and not sweet. be afraid. But well, I guess every, yeah, with this year, you're asking, like, if I was nervous. And over the years, for sure, get yeah. more used to, like, uh, the process where, like, I know if I'm skiing good or have a good, like, good season or if I'm, like, kind of landing back seat, like, I know that. And, Usually, right. like when we're filming, if I land it just kind of off, I'll always like try and go back up. Because you remember that cut too, that clip, and you'll watch it in the editing room. You're like, fuck, I can't. yeah. Or I just get home <laughs> that night and be like, oh, that clip was like so close, but oh, like maybe see, I didn't get the grab the way I wanted to, or like not quite stomp it the way. And then yeah. it just, I'm like, oh. I love how every, like, like every, every day you ski, every line you ski, which is with the thought of like, how is this going to go together? Nah, I don't know. Sometimes I'm just out there shredding, not like thinking. I'm, no, actually, I'm not like I'm. I'm often just riding, like just riding and trying to get as many laps a day I can. I have like a vision kind of of how what I want to do for the year. But I'm right. we're not. We have days where we go out and we like we need to get this shot, get this shot. But a lot of times I'm just like riding and right. just like flowing. That's always fast. That's why I ask fun. all these questions too. Yeah. It's fascinating to me because like you guys like yourself put out such like awesome segments amazing skiing yeah. that for someone like myself and the people listening it's like 
I want to pick your brain, understand your <laughs> secrets. So tell us your secrets. <laughs> yeah, I think that that feeling of just like growing when I was younger, like just because I was always, especially like when I first started coming up to BC or like getting out to some of these spots, like on the snowmobiles. Back in the day, I literally like we're like rolling out. And I'd see like one little thing where they're like basically like at the parking lot still. And I'd want to stop and like, did you guys not see this thing yeah, back right. there? And everyone would be like, no, no, like wait till <laughs> we get up top. Like that's where all the good shit is. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I was just so excited by like all like the train and like just how everything looks so crazy. Like when you see it on film, it almost looks like crazier than you remember it in real life. Just because you're like all up close on these like right. crazy features, right, pillows, right. spines, whatever. Yeah, yeah that I would be like so bummed if I didn't like see the trick through, you know? Right. That I just remembered like just feeling disappointed. So I'd be out in the field. If I don't get it, I just like try and remind myself like you got to go back up because like you're going to be bummed later if you don't. Redemption time. Yeah, if you don't get it. So And then often like that's how I got, I guess that helped me get better. And I always tell athletes, especially like if they're filming for one of my videos and like they'll put something down and there's a track and then like, they think it's not worth it to go back up because there's a track and like no dude like just go hit it again like it doesn't matter if there's one track in there right don't just hit it be, don't do it just be it, don't make the only reason you're gonna do it is for a clip totally go hit it anyways and yeah, then you'll yeah. feel how it feels and you'll yeah. get better like you the same kind of idea that you were talking about laps and laps and laps at like yeah. x games or a world cup right yeah it's just, just getting get, that repetition get the reps in get the practice in. same thing as yeah. like you guys doing like presses in the garage, right? <laughs> yeah, we're just pressing for those stomps. Reps, know? reps, <laughs> reps, yeah. man. Re- re- reps, 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 whether it's in the gym or on yeah. the hill. Yeah. just It's, it's going to make you better. Yeah, yeah. yeah for that's sure. Right. Sweet, boys. Yeah. Uh, thanks for coming on, you. First English language podcast. You <laughs> killed you it. You didn't need much. me here. I told you. <laughs> no. You got this, bro. Thank yeah, you. So yeah. Yeah. Sammy, <laughs> thanks, you. Yeah. thanks for having like, us at your house, man. Yeah, for sure. And um, do you guys have Is anything? that it? Are we done? Yeah, we, that's almost like Dude, hour you and just half. used me to get, you get over here with Peak. I see you now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, no, man, you were down. Come on, don't play no, me like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever, whatever. That was not the plan here. Yeah, had, uh, I was supposed to help uh, monitor to make sure <laughs> yeah, you yeah, went we're, along. Here. Yeah, we're gonna no, do a no, new no, podcast. No. Uh, <laughs> it was a fun time for me. Uh, anyways, um, anything? Any last words for people listening and watching? Oh uh, yeah, this year I'm back on the injury. I'm back, back from the injury. Yeah, back from the injury. I am hundred percent. Yeah, I'm skiing. Yeah, look out! I feel sorry for those landings. <laughs> Stomp. Yeah. Yeah. Some deep holes mm-hmm. out there. You? Any last words? Me? Um. Yeah. I guess psyched to see you back out on the snow this year. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. And just, yeah. I guess yeah. I want to say thanks to all the fans, followers, people have been supporting my skiing, all my sponsors. Mm-hmm supporting me keeping the dream alive and yeah i'm just so grateful to continue like following my passion and be able to make a living doing what i love and sweet super fired up and think i'm glad everyone like yup but uh yeah get ready for next year you haven't seen nothing yet next one we'll see (laughs) awesome hey thanks go watch go watch those films and uh we'll talk to you guys later all right thanks boys thank you thank you thanks for watching this video on the lpp youtube channel if you haven't yet please hit that subscribe button. It would mean a lot to me. And while you're here, you may as well watch this great LPP highlights video. Thanks.